This video is to be viewed alongside the instructions for Google Sheets for physics results and graphs from Highland Council. First thing you need to do is once you've downloaded the raw data spreadsheet here is to create a copy. So pull down file, make a copy and then rename your raw data sheet there. I'm just going to keep that copy of and then find a folder that you want to put it into in your drive, your Google Drive. In the same place there, and I'm just going to call that copy two. Okay, uh, it'll take a while for the file to load because uh, Google Docs is now pre preparing a new copy of this. First thing we're going to do is to put some grid lines around the data. By default, Google Sheets doesn't have any grid lines, unlike Microsoft Excel when it's printed. So what we'll do is just sweep through and highlight all the cells that we've been working with, the inverse square irradiance experiment, and click on that borders, and then select all borders in there like that. Next thing is we've got to unlike we've got to calculate the one over d squared for each of the results. So we're going to Put in a formula, which is pressing the equals key, and then one divided by, open the brackets, and then type in cell A2, and then multiply again by A2, and that should give us 25 as a result there. The other way you can do that is by putting in again equals one divided by open brackets. Instead of typing in the cell, you can click on the cell itself multiplied by again so I'll click on it a2 and to replicate that function all the way through if you go to the bottom right hand corner of the cell there where it turns into a crosshair with the cross and the circle and just drag that down through the column then you'll end up with the same formula duplicated all the way through there so you can see that's now seeing 1 over a5 times a5 so we've now got 1 over d squared one thing is that most physics teachers will notice the number of significant figures is too high for most of the data. So we can go up to the decreased decimal places, that'll take it right back down to zero and then increase it up by maybe two decimal places would be appropriate there for the calculated. Similarly, what you might want over here is to take that up to three, three decimal places because your distance would be measured to the nearest millimeter with a normal ruler. Okay, so that's our data uh, calculated. To put in the line graph, the easiest way with Google Sheets is to just highlight two columns and click on the insert chart, or you can do insert and chart. Either way, you'll end up with a graph that Google Sheets decides is the most suitable for your data. Rarely is it a scatter graph that we want for physics experiments. So under chart type, if you pull that down until you see the scatter option, click on that, and you've now got your graph of irradiance against distance squared, which is as we would expect there with just the raw data. However, we want this graph to be irradiance against one over distance squared. So in the x-axis, if you double click on that there, you can change the data that it's going to have instead of the first column what we actually want is the C column of 1 over D squared on the x-axis. Change that to C10, Z1 to C10, and then we'll get a graph which is much more the sort of thing that we'll be looking for with this sort of experiment. But this isn't still, st this still isn't suitable for SQA purposes, so you need to go into Customize tab at the top here and just work down the options here. So just going down here, first one, the title, Sorry, the, the um, style, that's okay. That's just going to change things like background color. The chart title and axis titles, you can give the title a little bit more of a informative title there. So I could say irradiance instead of intense in I and just work through that there. So you need to do that for each of the horizontal and vertical if you want to change them. The horizontal hasn't changed since we were at D for distance, so we'll just make that inverse square 
of distance just to make it clear what we're doing and that'll be in meters to minus two it doesn't offer you the chance to do subscript or superscript the series tab is one of the most useful because that allows you to change your plot points we're going to change them to black so it prints out more easily the main thing is to get the size of the points down to two pixels and across so it's much more easily seen where the points are on the graph and lastly under series click on trend line and that will be by default give you a linear trend line which is our best fit line needed for uh, physics experiments on whole legend doesn't need any changes to it again that's just a formatting option there it's under horizontal and vertical axis you can then change the minimum value for the because at the moment the graph is not showing a, a zero origin so if you click that on zero you can do that for both horizontal and vertical axes and change the spacings there so the grid lines is the final option and we do need to change that in the vertical you can see we've got one two three four five major grid line counts well best to change that to 10 so you get your maximum possible uh, divisions so minor grid lines always just change those to 10 they don't they're set to zero by default and you need to do that for both a horizontal axis as well so you need to pull up an axis that can stay at six on the major grid line count and put 10 on the minor there so that's your graph now with labels units best fit line and all the grid lines in there's two ways to paste it into your know, google docs to put it into a report first thing is to change the aspect ratio so we make it into a portrait style so it matches the portrait style of most reports and the easiest thing is to move it move it around the, page, the spreadsheet there and just to pull that down so it becomes longer than it is broader and do copy chart or control C would work and then move to your document that you want to paste it into and do edit and paste edit paste and then you, you want to link to spreadsheet so all the data if it's changed in the actual spreadsheet changes in the document and that can be sized there to suit the document the other thing is you may have a document which is if you want to print your data out landscape style instead of portrait you can take your graph and then move it to its own sheet so you say move to own sheet sheets will then produce a full a4 sized landscape version which then you can see copy chart and paste into a and then paste into oops, that's not quite gone right and then paste that into the document when it's in landscape style so if we just change that page to landscape We'll get rid of the one that I put in before. We'll get rid of that one. And if you were doing this, you'd need to have separate pages for your graphs in your report and print those separately. So we now do paste again, edit, paste or control and V. Again, we'll link the data and then uh, that's the full sized spreadsheet uh, which would appear on the pages okay so that's how you get good quality line graphs from the google sheets graph drawing